from marriage to marriage counseling. For the last 15 years, retired Army Ranger, Art Silky, and volunteer with Main Street Gordon have placed over 500 American flags each year on the grave of veterans. This year, there will be no American flags placed on these graves. What more? Due to the financial situation that has been placed on Main Street Gordon by the city of Gordon, no American flags could be purchased. To the families of all these fallen soldiers, we say thank you for the service of your loved one. Memorial Day is a day to remember all these fallen soldiers and that we will do. Chairman of the board. <coughs> day. So, this is May 20th. So, we can go Now, he is still the chairman of the board. <laughs> Not on the Better Home Town Direct, but he's been the chairman of the board of the Better Home Town Direct. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I have a question. <coughs> why, why, uh, why does Sam don't have any money? Why go in that home town? We didn't pay him until the check, the check bill yeah, got the bill. Oh, okay, that's what I wanted to ask. Yes, ma'am. Is it because the check? Yeah, I was looking at the check and I was yes, holding it for a while because that's what I wanted to see. I want to ask questions about it. And it's because the check hadn't been given to them. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I think we need to go and give them a check so we can't. Um, <coughs>
what I've said again. This is our town, and our city is not mine alone. It's yours. It's all about it. It's not black, and it's not white. Whether you choose to believe it or not, whether you choose to believe it or not, everyone has a right as counsel to ask questions, but in a professional and dignified manner. You can't just walk up in DASF and just demand from the president. You have to go through the protocol on any job. Any job, people. You don't walk in to just because you walk in. You do get grocery. You don't walk in the police station and demand that you see the chief. <laughs> Excuse me. As I said, we are a dignified, sophisticated people. This town is not to be, and it's not going to be, as long as I'm there, continuously looked upon as a town of disrespect. Now, you all can act disrespectful, but that's on you. When I do business for my entire life, I've worked professionally, I've traveled throughout the U.S. of A. And I come home to Gordon, and if to, and they always used to slogan, if you live in Gordon, you be home now. We like to keep it like that. This is our town. This is what we want to make a better hometown. You all have a voice. And yes, in a very respectful and dignified manner. I hope if you're doing this here, that you don't go home treating your children that way because that's total disrespect. So I ask that when we come to these meetings, that we maintain order, as Mr. Mixon has already brought out and spoken in latest term, this is the reason we can't get insurance because of your actions. <laughs> People. We are here to respect each other. So that's what we'll do. And I thank you for coming out, and I hope you will come again uh, at this end. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to adjourn. All in favor. This ends another public meeting in the state of Georgia. We must realize that Meg, Georgia, and some of the other cities are having the same problems. I have never seen this in any city council in my lifetime. Yet, the governor and others seem uninterested, in my opinion, based upon what mayors are telling me. And I think it's time for a change in the way city governments are conducted in the state of Georgia. Right. 
price. We have used that money for the last 10 years to keep our tax rate from going up. Every year, our budget reflects a statement in it that at the very end, whatever money is needed to balance the budget, we get it out of the reserve fund. And that's the first reserve fund we go to. I see. I see. So, so even though he felt like uh, if you guys closed the account, the paper trail that he says wouldn't exist, because he's talking about some of those um, uh, suspicious withdrawals and things that he thinks occurred. So would you, if, if, if those were, if, the, if those had existed, wouldn't you go ahead and say to keep the account open just to be sure? I wouldn't have any problem keeping it open. I mean, it's an open account. Anybody can track the trail, you know. The state GMA runs that. They have people who specialize in you know, looking at all that money. And there's a trail that all they have to do is go back and, and look and see when the money was withdrawn and look on our account for a minute and our budget number to show when we got the money out and what we spent it for. You know, we would withdraw fifty to a hundred thousand dollars at a time to pay for a well, you know, replacement. We would take that money out to put in our general fund to balance the budget. We still have two million one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in the Golden Bank in a CD that came out of that fund. Two million one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars there now. See? So that's two million of that money now. You know. So you have so, all that money. So what about all this talk about not being able to pay? Back? That money's in a CD, but it's a uh, account where at the end of the year that interest is rolled over into that account and it finishes up pretty close to our year end, around October, when our budget runs out and starts again. Then, if the money is needed, all we would have to do is take money out of that CD to, you know, balance our budget for this year. That's what the money's there for. So you can't use it to pay bills and things during the well, it's tied up in a CD. You know, it's just like any other CD, and we elected to roll the uh, interest over monthly rather than take that interest out. So at the end of the term, when this uh, CD renews, you know, uh, it, it's only paying, you know, less than 1%, even at that, you know. But still, you know, two million one hundred and something thousand dollars. I believe the CD itself was two million one hundred and eighteen thousand dollars, and it has gained interest. You know, they roll it back over. So I don't know what it's worth at this time, but I'm gonna guess, you know, that we probably made three or four thousand dollars a month on, you know, that money. Do you believe the council followed the city charter tonight? No, sir, we did not. To my opinion, we did not. And in what ways would you say that happened? Uh, we, I've been on council for over 30 years. The mayor has never voted on any any of the things unless it's a tie. And that's what the charter says, and that's what I stand by. Okay. All right, thank you, Councilor Mr. Deasy, can I ask you a question? Certainly. Uh, it seems to me that you are very uh, informed. And uh, my question is that why do you think, I know you can't answer for other people, it seems like to me you have the more knowledge of, of the council members uh, uh, what do you think maybe the breakdown? They're not reading the charter, they don't understand the charter. What do you think that problem may be? Uh, Mr. Ryan, I'm not positive exactly where the problem is. I do know that a lot of them have not kept up with the budget monthly like I do. I don't think they read their yearly budget and keep up with it line by line like I do. Each one of us gets a statement once a month that comes to us through the city clerk. And I myself get what we I call a financial printout of every check that goes out. And each check is written on a specific account. And I can see it down at my house and go through all of those and I can see where the money goes. Each check that's written, the next line item under it, you know, reduces by that amount. So at the bottom of each page or the bottom as you go through the uh, money show where it's going out, you know. And I do pride myself in keeping up what goes on in the city of Gordon. I have been here, as I just stated, almost 30 years now. So, Councilman Eater, you feel pretty confident that the city of financial uh, um, uh, records are pretty straight. Yes, you say? I, do, I, do. I, I can tell the way you talk tonight. I really believe that you believe that they're pretty straight. I, I really do. I, and, and if they're any otherwise, I would very much like for somebody to come to this table and sit down with us, mayor, council, 
and tell us where they think that money's at or what happened and why they think there's money missing, you know. I just accounted for over $2 million that was in that one fund, Georgia One Fund account, you know. Okay, Mr. Ethan, uh, I have another question, and it may be a little more pointed, and I'm sure you can answer it because I think you do, you do a good job when answering the question. But the question is, I, I've been doing this for a long time, and I have never seen a mayor pro tem to take a stand in opposition to a mayor. So you must feel very strongly about what you believe. Am I correct? Yes, sir, I do. Now, until the mayor is absent of this meeting, I am not mayor pro tem. The only time I'm mayor pro tem right, is right. in the absence of right, the mayor. Absolutely. Any other time, all I am is council. a council. Right, that is true. I'm one of six That's and, true. Uh, on this council, you, you know, and the mayor. You put a job on this stuff. And as we go through, you know, I try to listen to everything that everybody says at this floor, on this floor, or out on the street. And I try to give them as educated an answer as I can by what I know, whether it's by the charter, or whether it's by the financial figures, or whether it's by the sunshine law, or whether it's by the elected officials code that we go by. Uh, we're a city of death. A lot of people don't understand that we are. When we elected to be a city of ethics, our mayor, previous mayor, and council member signed on to it. But the city continues to be in that city of ethics program. All of these council members now and the mayor have to be in it too because our city is designated a city of ethics. You can check with the state of Georgia. We're classified as a city of ethics. A city of ethics resolution and amended ordinance is filed with them. And it lifts our council and mayor to a higher standard than a regular city council. We sign it and we date it when we signed on to it. And we are saying that we'll operate our city at the highest ethics that you can, above what normally would take place. Okay. If you read the ethics, you know, ordinance under the uh, under the state of Georgia, you can look it up, gmanet.com. And you feel like that has been followed here because you've been on council a long time. You feel like that has been complied with, am I correct? I do not. Not. Lately, I do not. Not lately, okay, no, but sir. before then, you feel, feel before pretty Before then, I, I feel like we were following it pretty close. Pretty close. You know, okay. There'd be some times you may vary from it. But, but you feel comfortable with it? I did. Okay. Now, my final question is, I look at this council for the few times I've been coming over here, and it seems like to me, and it don't trouble me, but I do have questions. Why is it that other council members seem unable to offer a motion? Very seldom. You most always get it done. And I respect you because if nobody else do it, you got to do it. And, and the, the affairs of the city got to go on. So I commend you for that. But what, what, what do you think, you know, you don't have answers on that? Mr. Ryan, I couldn't answer that. Okay. I mean, I wish I could. I mean, as you said earlier, yeah. I am outspoken. Yes, sir. And I feel that I should be outspoken because I represent all the citizens of this town, black and white. Right. Over the years, you can go out in our community and you can talk to the black community or the white community. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. I've saved a little black child before myself. Mm -hmm. I go to uh, fires at houses anywhere, you know, as the fire chief. I respond, I, medical emergency, uh, Councilman Reese, I went to his house just recently and, and uh, helped him during a medical emergency, you know, stay there, help get him put in the ambulance. I have been to his house for his wife before. I mean, I do this because I love my community. I was born and raised. I've never lived over a mile from where I was born. Ms. Deeds, I want to thank you a lot. Uh, thank you for commenting. Some people wouldn't have done it. Thank you very much. Sir, sir, I hope you keep all.